Hi there, I'm Black Bright. Welcome to my channel. Um, I hope today finds you in good health and, you know, in a good state of mind. And today I wanted to talk about the Jewish community, especially in the light of those five recent stabbings at the rabbi's house in New York. Um, I'm probably quite ignorant about this. It's a topic I'm unfamiliar with. So I am just going to talk about this based on my feelings and what little knowledge I have. Um, first thing is that I don't understand is that why there is an attack on Jewish people. In, 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 in particular, the Hasidic Jews or what they call the Hera, what do they call them? They've given them this name. Um, Haridi, you know, apparently that's supposed to cover all, all the different types of Orthodox Jews. Anyway, what I don't understand is that from what I was reading, they're saying that these Orthodox Jews, well, Jews, full stop, are not white. I don't get it. This is the far right the extremist right are saying this. And then you have some far black, um, the Hebrew Israelites, who are claiming that they're not the chosen people. I mean, to me, it just seems so ridiculous. I don't understand why they're being persecuted. And you know, well, I do understand why. It's the same old thing. If you're different, they don't like it. Whoever, the far right or the far left, not the far left, but normally the far right, they don't like people who are different. And that could be with your custom, because they are Orthodox Jews and they have the little curls and the hat and they have a kind of a regime going on and they have or a ritual way of dressing. That's an issue. It's like the Muslims with Boris calling them letterboxes. You know, if you're not, if you're outside the norm, they seem to have a problem with it. And that can be, like like I said, the Hasidic Jews, as far as I'm concerned, they're white. So I don't understand how white people have an issue with white people just because they of the way they dress and what they believe in. And then you have um, people who are discriminating against blacks. The same thing because of their colour, their culture or whatever. Then you have people discriminating against the EU because of their accent. Well, not just the EU, yeah, well, EU, anybody with an accent, they discriminate against that. Anything that's not within their little, tiny little, um, tiny little circle of what they construe as being normal, is considered either a threat or dangerous or shouldn't be a part of any of the wider picture. I don't get it. I really don't get it. And when I started reading up about it, I started looking at the similarities between Jews and blacks. I'm sure they would not like to be, as, you know, associated or related to black people. But the fact that they're a minority or perceived as a minority, that you're, they're being treated like a minority, just like blacks are, and just like the disabled and any other minority. They're being treated as though they're different. And that is what I'm getting at. But the only thing is, is that I don't understand why. Apparently, there's been a spate of 10 incidents, um, hate crime, since the 10th of December until, until um, a couple of days ago. When these five stabbings, somebody went into a rabbi's home with an umbrella, concealing a knife, and started stabbing people. I mean, what is wrong with people? How can you stab people or hurt any race just because of what they believe in or what they look like? It's absolutely ridiculous. How ignorant is that? I don't understand if these people had persecuted you or if they, if they um, are being hostile to you. But the Jews in particular, they mind their own business. They're just going from home to the, to, 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 um, to the synagogue, to work, to study, 
and you know they keep out of everybody's way so what is people's problem i don't get it it's almost like people look for something to torment or to create some kind of havoc that's what it seems like to me so then i thought to myself i just i just kind of share what i did find out um okay orthodox jews are recognizable um apparently there are two types of the um haredi jews that i'm aware of that's the hasidic and the mit nag dim jews the hasidic jews apparently are not as acquainted with the torah as the mit nag nag dim jews and apparently i guess it's a kind of one is a bit more superior than the other apparently now because of more education there uh, there's less discrimination between the two but before there was some rivalry okay so orthodox jews are recognizable um in their black suits white brimmed hats curls down the side protruding from their yamulkus i think that is what the hat is called dressed in white shirt the titzvit don't know how to pronounce it or ritual tassels those are the tassels that you see below their jackets the um the women wear long skirts thick stockings and head coverings and they give it, they have been given the name ultra orthodox Jews. I don't know why they can't just be orthodox Jews. Where does the ultra come in? It's almost like they have to classify or categorize. I guess orthodox Jews might be just um they might look look more they might conform or look more western than the ultra even though they practice a religion more than the ultra orthodox Jews that's the only that's the only thing i can come up with why they'd have to put um prefix it with ultra i don't understand all these categories and it's these categories that cause a problem why can't they just be Jews anyway um to me when i see them i mean i've been to um stanford hill and when i see um the whole host of them walking down the street i just think i i'm absolutely amazed it's almost like i'd love to paint it if i could capture that image sometimes i think you know i'd love to take a photograph but i don't know if it's appropriate but i think it's just such a very very strong vivid image and maybe it's that you know what people are probably afraid of the unity and i think that is what people get afraid of and you know when with black people because they're all separated and they're all over a place they're less of a threat but with the hasidic jews they don't mix they don't mingle nobody gets into their business they don't really in interact with non-jews unless they have to like if they go into the post office or something but they're very insular they're very to themselves they don't want to contaminate themselves with western traditions and all that kind of thing they just want to get on with their life they have they tend to have a lot of children and um they work they study they come home and the, normally the woman stays home and looks after the children the man goes out and works just a very simple basic lifestyle so i don't understand what the problem is why people see them as a threat and want to hurt them i could say the same with black people i don't understand what the, what the, what the um problem is but I, with the black people i kind of understand because i is a fear factor as well so it might be a different kind of fear with the jews it's that unity fear the fact that they're so unified and they're so uniform that's probably a threat but with blacks i think it's the it's the idea that they're stronger that they're um aggressive that they're a threat it's a perceived threat it's not a real threat but that is the difference but i think with black people because they can interact with them more and that you know they get to know a little bit about their lifestyle and their customs maybe they're less of a threat but with hasidic jews people can't perpetrate that they can't get into that they can't get involved 
So they don't know what's going on in that little, um, in that little circle. And that's what they see as threatening. That's what they want to do away with. And it's absolutely ridiculous. People should be able to um, follow whatever custom they want, providing they're not stepping on anybody's toes. And they're not doing that. Every time I see them, they're just walking to and fro, wherever they're going. They have a, a focus of where they want to go. They go and they go back home. They're not doing anything to anybody. So I don't understand why there's a sudden, um, there's this sudden influx of incidents more recently. Anyway, the word Haredi covers a broad array of theologically, politically and socially conservative Orthodox Jews, sometimes referred to as ultra-Orthodox. What unites Haredim is their absolute reverence for the Torah, including both the written and oral law, as the central and determining factor in all aspects of life. Consequently, respect and status are often accorded in proportion to the greatness of one's Torah scholarship and leadership is linked to the learnedness. So I guess the more um, educated you are about the Torah, the higher you are, the more elevated you are. And in order to prevent outside influence and contamination of values and practices, Haredim strive to limit their contact with the outside world, avoiding as much as possible both non-Haredi Jews and non-Jews. So not even just Jews, not even just non-Jews, but if they're not Hasidic Jews or Orthodox Jews, they disassociate themselves from them as well. The interaction with outsiders is generally confined to basic economic contact and unavoidable public interactions. However, certain groups of Haredim, notably but not exclusively members of the Shabab Lubavitch, do make contact with non-Haredi Jews for the purpose of Kuruv encouraging others to adopt more stringent religious observance. So, um, like I said, um, the Hasidic Jews validated the Hasidism, validated those who could not master the intricacies of advanced Talmic, Talmudic scholarship. So those are the ones that, you know, advanced Talmudic scholarship. I bet that's really, really difficult. The established rabbis who decried Hasidism as false and corrupted were referred to mit nagdim. But as the Hasidic movement evolved, formal yeshiva scholarship became increasingly important in this community as well. This led to a lessening of differences between Hasidism and mit mit nagdim. Oh, it's so hard to say. But I think it's because it comes from Hebrew. Um, Apparently, the Holocaust was also a critical factor in the development of Haredi Judaism. A few highly observant European Jews sought to preserve their lifestyle by moving their communities and learning institutions elsewhere, mainly to Israel and the United States. The state of Israel currently has the largest Haredi population worldwide, with an estimated 800,000 and with the US trailing behind at about 500,000. With the most explosive birth rate of any Jewish group, Haredi Judaism may very well come to dominate the population of the Jewish world in years to come. According to the Jerusalem Post, the current Israeli Haredi population alone is set to double within the next decade. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna talk about that. Um, yeah, I will, where they're mostly populated. Each community has its own synagogues, yeshivot, and community-oriented organizations. The major centers of Haredi life in the United States are in and around New York City, Borough Park, Monsey, and Williamsburg. The two largest Haredi communities in Israel are the city of Bray Brak, and in Jerusalem, Mia Shea in district. In the UK, it's 
Golders Green, Stoke Newington, Stanford Hill and Hackney. People in this community have lots of children and they're always busy 24 hours a day. They're going to the synagogue, synagogue, going to study, to work, to see their family, back to the synagogue, social events in the evening. It's a very full life. Yes, so um, most of the men devote themselves full time to Torah study and their wives commonly assume the role of breadwinner. Because most Haredim lives in single earner households with large numbers of children, Haredi communities are generally characterised by extreme poverty, requiring subsidies from charities and governments in order to subsist. However, in recent years, a new Haredi upper class has emerged, especially in Israel, flourishing in upper management business and diamond industry. Children of the Haredi upper class attend the same yeshivot as their less privileged peers, while their parents direct a very large portion of their income to communal charities and funds that support major rabbinic figures and their projects. When faced with major life decisions such as where to live, whom to marry and whether to study full time or work, Haredi Jews often consult their rabbis. So I thought I'd kind of um, look into that because I just thought, you know, the similarities and, you know, it's always look, it's always best to look at what we have in common than what we have that's different. And so, um, White people should be looking at they have their white skin in common and not their differences, i.e. the way they dressed, what they're observing. And similarly with black people, it shouldn't just be the colour that you're looking at. What do they have in common? You're born in the same country, you have the same culture, you have the same traditions, you speak the same language. Look for what we have in common and that will cause less division and all this attacks and hate crime that we're seeing. And that's all I've got to say. Bye-bye.